one said you could touch. What's up guys, it's the Michael M here in 1997, here to give you guys a good old review. It's been a while since I did a review, and now I'm back, it's here to do a review of Bayonetta 2. Now, there's a lot of history with this game, basically. Uh, a few years ago, 2010, this game came out, and I really was into it, but I never actually got a chance to actually buy the game when it first came out, for some reason. Either it was, it was just not the right timing for me, or, or I basically didn't have enough time to actually get the game. And then I just waited, and then when they announced that Bayonetta 2 was going to be Wii U exclusive in 2012, this game got like a lot of backlash. Like People got angry that it was going to be coming to their, um, PS3 and 360, but then that type of anger got lost. And then they kept on saying that it was going to be coming to Wii U, and now it's here. So let's just get into the review. Let's just get into the first question, basically. Does it live up to the hype? And I'm just going to say right now, if you have a Wii U, and if you think about getting Bayonetta 2, I really do say buy this game for just basically for Wii U. Um, I'm also be doing uh, questions like last video with Evil Within. I'm going to be answering questions that uh, I basically asked on Facebook to do. So it's going to be just like that, just like last time. So let's just get into this. Let me just find the questions first. Let's see. There we go. Now let's just go find it. Um, let's see. First question is by Rob H. Draven. Is this game a good buy and replay value? Is there a good replay value? Well, it just says replay value, that's all. Rob H. Draven, sorry for ruining your question. Um, the game is definitely worth a good buy, in my opinion. It's best, definitely worth picking up uh, right away. Um, replay value is tons of it. I'll get into that later on. So let's just start getting into the story, actually. Um, the story of this game is you basically play as being an uh, Umbra Witch who is basically not one of, um, who is a witch of heaven or hell, but somewhere in between, where she kills angels and demons, basically not to get killed herself. And the game starts off with Bayonetta basically going Christmas shopping. You know what I need? Some heels without guns. You don't mind if we make a quick stop, do you? Do you know what day's coming up? Here I was shopping, minding my own business, then you show up and turn me into a damn porter. Seriously, Bayonetta, you still haven't paid me back for the car. Hey, whoa! Now, now, was that any way to speak to an old friend? Besides, I did that job for you. For free, my dad. Do I really have to tell everyone how you grabbed onto my leg sobbing like a schoolboy? With, um... When she encounters her store or friend, Jean, who basically uh, talks to her for a while. And then you always know how to make an entrance, Jean. A rare sight to see you in the city. I just had something I had to look into. Cereza, you haven't felt anything strange recently. Now that you mention it. And what happens is, angels will try to attack Bayonetta while she goes shopping, and then she starts her badass action kicking.
happens is, though, when Bayonetta summons one of her monsters to kill the bad guys, or angels, it basically turns up Bayonetta and ends up killing, uh, not killing, but uh, injuring John to the point where her soul has been knocked out of her body and sent to Inferno, or in other words, Hell. story of Bayonetta has to go to basically a city called Norton. I think it's called, I might have butchered it, so sorry about that. And you basically have to um, go to a mountain called Fimbleventer, where you must have to go to Inferno to save Jean, when you only have one day to do it before she is lost forever. And that's like the main part of the storyline. But if you think it's going to be all, oh, that's basically, that's all the story. Actually, there's a lot more layers to the story as it is. Just like the first game, there's a lot more layers to this game that there already is. Um, so that's really a cool thing for this game. And this, and Ben is not the only character that's actually interesting. There's tons of characters from the other games. For the first game, basically, like Ronin, who is basically this like uh, tra um this guy who basically helps out Bayonetta when she needs weapons, and he's basically this cool badass guy who's strong and basically kills demons and basically has his own bar in this like little hell sanctuary of his. Um, then there's this other guy named Enzo, who's kind of like a Joe Pesci type of character. And he, his scenes drag on little by little, little too long. And then you, uh, you visit other characters like Luca, and they meet new characters like Loki, who's this young boy, who is actually powerful and has some cool powers with him. And then you meet other characters like a Lumen Sage, who's trying to attack you guys. Tons of other characters that I won't spoil because the story has a lot of twists and turns in it. It's really a, a, a complicated story at, um, when more you get into it. And because there's a lot of mythos in here. And I love what we love with some games is they build on its mythology. And this game definitely builds on its mythology a lot. I mean, the, the storytelling that they have here and the backstory that they give with the story itself is really intriguing at times. And it's really well done here. And if you never played the first Bayonetta and you're going to this blind uh, well, playing Bayonetta 2 only, well, guess what? Nintendo and Platinum Games, the developers of this um, series, decided to give you both, not just uh, Bayonetta 2, but the original Bayonetta as well as a port. And I, I'm going to say, I played uh, both versions. I played on Bayonetta 2 first, then I played Bayonetta. And I must just say, the Bayonetta on uh, the first one is just as good. It's gr graphically, it looks great. Um, it gr uh, plays well. It looks well. And it, uh, but the uh, Bayonetta two definitely looks a little bit better due to how this one came out uh, just a few weeks ago. So, um, so back to story wise, um, it never uh, the story is never is not bad by any, any means necessary. Cause I actually enjoyed the story, in my personal opinion. While some people say, oh no, the story is weak. Characters are forgettable. It's all full of stupid dialogue and horrible uh, um, voice acting and all that stuff. <coughs> I don't believe that, in my opinion. I mean, this is from a Japanese company. You understand that this is a Japanese game basically brought over to America. And it's going to be type of that type of silly like dialogue and the silly characters that are over-the-top, ridiculous, hyper-active type of characters. And I love that about the game. Is it kind of has that cool for like Japanese look to it, and it has that Japanese style. And I really do love that about this game. It really, it, it doesn't. It's not trying to be like everything else. It wants to be its own type of game. And I love that. And it's basically the story as well. 
Well, it may seem predictable at first. The story actually just goes all over the place, but it doesn't go all over the place as in it falls apart. And the story never falls apart basically in this game. That's a good thing. Um, and the game's length is not really that short, or it doesn't uh, overstay its welcome, or it doesn't understate its welcome either. The game's campaign itself took me around 10 to 12 hours to beat throughout its um, awesome gameplay. And story-wise itself, it's a really good story. And and there's even a little thing after the credits where there's a, like a little ending. So if you're going to beat the game way after the credits to see a little sneak peek for what might happen for the third game. If this game does well, which I really do hope it does. Um, when it comes to gameplay, the game really does elevate it. This... Bandit 2 is one of those games that maybe a lot of people say has okay story, but really, really good gameplay. Um, um, so basically you can play with either the Wii U gamepad, um, the Pro Controller, which is up there, I'm not going to bring it down now. You can also use the Wii U Nunch, uh, Wii Emote, and the old classic controller from the old Wii times. Um, basically I played the entire game, both the original and the sequel, with this bad boy. I've been tar I played with this thing in the bed. I, while I'm asleep, while I'm next to me while I'm about to go to sleep, I play with me when I'm awake. I basically play with this the entire time. And then I would play with the Pro Controller second. I mostly play with these things to see how it works and how it plays. Um, and the controls wise, it, it feels great. It feels smooth. It's one of those games that seems complicated when you look at it. When you jump into it, it's really simple. But it's not so simple that it's dull and repetitive. None of it is repetitive by any means necessary. Um, gameplay, like I said, it's amazing. Um, Bayonetta has basically two sets of weapons. She can have weapons in her hands and weapons on her feet due to the fact that her character uh, starts off with guns that's on her high heels, which is awesome. So this brings a lot of variety to the game that you don't get in other games like Devil May Cry or God of War or like the Ninja Gaiden series. As um, the, um, You basically find weapons throughout the game and find collectibles and unlockable weapons that you find throughout stores and little secrets, you basically find these weapons, and what happens is, you can put, like, um, you can put, um, Bayonetta's guns in her hands, and then you can put, like, two swords on her high heels, and this could also bring a lot of variety, and it also brings a lot of cool ways to really, um, just uh, extend the gameplay of its combo system, as there's tons of combos, there's a, actually a list of them, you go in our training mode, and you're trying to do all the combos, there's even more combos with those combos, it's basically a combo within a combo. It's so complex, this game, at times, that you you just so much stuff in here that you want to try to find all of it. And it's amazing that this game can do that which uh, with its system. The Like I said, the combat system in this is great. Other games, you feel punished for like getting beaten up. In this game, you don't because what's cool about this game is when an enemy tries to hit you, and at the last second you evade it, there's a witch time mode. And what witch time is is basically time slows down just for a few seconds, so you can make a quick comeback and hit them up and get rid of their health and basically kill them. And it's awesome. And not only that, there's also torture attacks. And these torture attacks are so awesome and gruesome that each enemy has their own type of torture attack. So, if you go to the same enemy two times, sometimes their torture death will not be the same. It's really cool as each enemy has a different type of variety, except some bosses you can't do torture attacks, you have to do a climax. And, so, and that's a, there's a lot of stuff to say about the gameplay here, but I'm going to try to finish this up in this small, like, shorter review than last time. Um, 
<coughs> um, so when it comes to gameplay, there's tons of stuff here. Um, level design wise, it's a big game. It's like there's so much movement happening. One level you're gonna be like on top of a the first level basically, you're on top of a jet that's flipping and flying all over New York City while fighting angels. <laughs> Then you're on top of a train, and it's moving really quickly, and the bridge is falling apart while you're going through a train level. And there's a part when the, when you're on a like in the, uh, the city, and the city starts breaking them off, and it's like flipping all over the place, and it goes upside down. Variety and design of levels is just just well done. It's pitch perfect. It's exactly what it needs to be, and I love that for you. Um, these developers, Platinum Games are a talented group of uh, developers and they know how to make awesome level design and I just love that about this group of developers um, when it comes to gameplay and boss battles boss battles if you played Metal Gear Rising Revengeance and you know how to do hack and slash games you know how to do boss battles in that game and boss battles in here is just like over the top awesome so these boss battles could actually have like multiple moments of like intensity and you never feel like a every single boss feels the same it always feels different as each one has their own patterns or their own movements or their own weaknesses and their own speeds and their advantages and their disadvantages you gotta learn all this stuff and it's amazing how the game really does um, um, it's not really an easy game at all if you think this is like a cakewalk no it's not it's gonna beat your butt your ass down to the ground it's gonna show you who's boss till you show them and that's really cool is that the game is actually no easy cakewalk. On the easiest difficulty, you might get your you might die a few times. I'm just gonna say that. I didn't die too much, but I did die when I started playing on the higher difficulties. And the difficulties are named weirdly. I mean they're not called easy, normal, or hard. They're called first, second, and third climaxes. Yeah, climaxes. And that's due to the new ability of beta that gets called the Lubrin Climax, which is basically she's um, she basically upgrades her powers and she's more stronger. She starts uh, hanging out, smashes, and the climax is itself is basically like finishers to all these boss battles and some care and some enemies. It was basically Beta basically sem summons a wicked weave demon from her hair, which is basically her suit. So basically, it suits her hair. She summons a monster from her hair from a portal, and you basically have to do a quick time event. You gotta like mash like a button or like move the analog stick real quickly in a like certain direction, and it's really well done here, and it's really well done. I just love that about the game is that nothing feels punishing. You always feel like you're getting a reward for something. Um, when it comes to Wii specifics, 
they don't force any gimmicky moves on you, which I'm glad for. They don't make you do like this. And if they do, they give you an option to change the controls, which I love. Um, also, you can actually play the game entirely on the gamepad, as in, you use a stylus, which I have here. You basically move Bayonetta around by moving around um, the screen. Then you tap an enemy, and you'll attack that enemy for a certain amount of time. You're going to dodge. And this basically just makes the game harder, as in, it's not... If you're used to playing with the thumbsticks and the buttons, it's going to be hard to play without having any buttons around you. So, if you're one of those hardcore fans who really want to try that way, go ahead and do that. For me, it's going to take a little... I do little by little. I don't do it all the time. So, that's just me. Um, so, basically, gameplay-wise, it's just outstanding. There's so much unlockable content in this game. You're going to be playing through this game over and over trying to find all the content. Um, graphically, the game looks amazing. Animations are top-notch. The blood and gore in the game is awesome. Um, visually, it looks amazing and good old 1080p. And the game runs smoothly at a good 60 frames per second. And there was no frame rate drops in my playthrough. I had no frame rate problems. No, like, all, like, abrupt sh uh, shots of it slow down for no reason. That never happened in the my playthrough. Thank God, and I love that for this game. Especially as in the port original, like I said. Um, it, the frame rate doesn't drop in the original either. And it's really updated on great visuals. Um, also, if you get, if, when you play these games, you also get unlockable costumes, Nintendo costumes, like... You can put Bayonetta in um, the Princess Peach costume, and she has a little skirt and her panties underneath. You can put her in a Daisy costume, the Samus Aran costume, Link's costume, or even Fox McCloud for the new Bayonetta, not for the old one, though. So you're gonna be, so there's a lot of unlockable content here, exclusive stuff for Nintendo, which is really awesome, and I'm really glad for that. And uh, music-wise, the music soundtrack. If you just played like Metal Gear Rising Revenge, just like I said before. Or the original Bayonetta, you know how to do soundtracks. The soundtrack here is just amazing. Some of the music here is just so, like, soothing at times. And at other times, it's so intense that it gets you prepared for a battle. Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to beat this guy's butt. I'm going to slice him up into smithereens. It gives you all this feeling like, oh, wow, I'm actually doing something that's rewarding. And this music is all satisfying. If you love games like DMC, God of War, or Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, or Ninja Gaiden series, you're going to have tons of fun with this hack and slash game. Actually, this is actually one of my most favorite hack and slash games ever now, thanks to this game. Um, that's really a lot. Just by the game campaign itself, this could be a contender for Game of the Year. And uh, just by the campaign, I could have been just happy. But they, give you, they actually went forward to do a multiplayer mode in this game. Now, there's no um, four-player multiplayer like that. Instead, it's an online co-op only mode. Now, I'm going to answer another question here because there's a question about the co-op. Um, Linus Kames, I, I can't say his name. Linus Kames says, does it have offline co-op? Sadly, no, there's no offline co-op. If you're ever going to play co-op, you have to play online only. Which kind of sucks, but I understand that. That's okay with me. Um, I'll answer another question later. But let's we just go over multiplayer real quickly. Um, basically, multiplayer is basically you play as Bayonetta and you play like another character, and you basically do like short little matches of kill this area of are arena of enemies in this short amount of time. And what happens is you gotta bet your um your your currency in this game, which is basically Halos. You basically bet currency on these cards, and, you, and the higher you bet on the cards, the more difficult the enemies are. <laughs> It's actually real cool, and I actually like this because it gives you a little burst. It's like uh, it doesn't like drag itself on too long. It doesn't like <coughs> waste like an hour of gameplay. It's just like, a little short burst, and only like six uh, six rounds you have to do. And what's cool is 
if you beat your uh, your um, co-op partner, it's really fun to like like you don't put in his face, but you can also chat with him and all that stuff. Uh, but you can't change your character while you're playing. You have to pick your character, and you have to pick their equipment, you have to pick their weapons as soon before you go online. So you gotta be careful with that. Um, you can also, if you, there's no one online, you can also play with a uh, computer AI. However, but you cannot play offline co-op. So sorry about that. There's no offline co-op in this game. Sorry about that. Um, so basically, online multiplayer itself, tag climax, is a thumbs up in my opinion. I really think the multiplayer wasn't gonna work, but. Platinum Games just knows how to do good multiplayer so, so nice job there. Um, next question is, uh, this is from Hamad Shazad, or Sh Shazad. Do you think it's stupid that they have like a sexualized character? Now what he means is sexualized character is Bayonetta. They, he's saying, do you think it's stupid? No, because this is from a game from a Japanese company, and in there, they don't think it's over-sexualized. They think that that's just what it is. And I like that as in, Platinum Games is not afraid to say, this is what we are, this is what we like doing, deal with it or go home. That's what I like about Platinum Games is, they like to show us this stuff, and if we don't like it, we just walk away. And I like that about this game is that, it's not afraid to show its true colors. And I love that about Bayonetta too. I love that about Bayonetta in general. Yeah, so back to the point. Let me see if there's any other questions here for me to answer. Um, yeah. Another question here is from Carrie Downs. I have an opinion about, um, game question. How does it compare to the Devil May Cry games or the God of War games? Hmm. Well, I really do like the new DMC series. I never played the old Devil May Cry, but I have played the uh, old God of Wars and the new ones. And I haven't been playing Ninja Gaiden for a while, so this is just basically to Devil May Cry and God of War to you, Carrie. So, I'm going to answer your question right now. Um, in my personal opinion, I prefer this system of combat over Devil May Cry's or God of War system of combat. Basically because for some reason it just works out so much better for this damn <coughs> Nintendo um, controller. I actually like playing with this um, combat system. But this is my personal opinion. So if you think you like Devil May Cry system of combat better or God of Wars, that's your personal opinion. But for me personally, I like um, Bayonetta's own combat system. I, it's really good. It basically learns from any mistakes that anyone had with the original and basically fixes it and makes it better. And it gives it like a good old kiss and sends it to the audience, to the public to play and love. Um, let's see. Next question, next question, next question. Um, hmm. Uh, that's all the questions here. That's a shame there wasn't that many questions asked. Hopefully, you guys will basically ask more questions in the next video. Now, I would have been happy just by getting Bayonetta 2 by itself, but like I said before, you get Bayonetta 1 here for free. So we say you get two games for the price of one. So that's awesome. So, let's go over already. Gameplay-wise, it's amazing. Story is really well done. It's not the best story of all time, but it's really well done storytelling. Um, could, uh, visually, it looks amazing. Great 1080p, 60 frames per second. Music-wise, it's great. Sound design is also real good with the kind of crunches and the monster noises. Music is good. Voice acting is top-notch. Uh, do I have to go over anything else? On multiplayer, I've already been over that. So, I think that's it for now, guys. That's the end of this video. So, it's time for me to give you the final verdict. Um, I've been thinking this in my head for like an entire day right now. And I'm gonna... I can't... There's no real problems for me for this game. There's no flaws in this game. Never did I have a learning curve problem, a frame rate problem, or any problem all together in this game. So I'm just going to have to give it, in my personal opinion, what I believe it deserves. A 10, in my opinion. This is really one of those... This is at the peak of hack and slash action, slashing up game genres out there. It's one of my favorite hack and slash genre games out there. It's uh, next to Ninja Gaiden series. It's next to the God of War series, Devil May Cry series. In my opinion, it, it beats those games, some of those games at times. Because of how well smooth the combat is. I just love this game at times. It's just so well done, and I love it. Reviewers out there are gonna can't won't give it a perfect uh, game, perfect score for some issues. Like some people say, oh, it feels too much like the original. It's supposed to be like the original. It's a sequel. Um, that's a, that's not a problem. That's not a flaw. It's supposed to be like the original. We want a game that does not feel like the original at all. Use your damn head when you review the games. Not just some critics out there. Um, but, in my opinion, I just feel like this game really does deserve its uh, re respect. I believe that the four years in development that this game was in, 
deserves its 10 out of 10 status. Um, I really do think that hopefully this game will do well enough so that Nintendo will say to Platinum Games, we can make a Bayonetta 3, as I really do want a Bayonetta 3 from this game. I really do, because this game is just awesome. It's pure awesome, adrenaline action, hack and slash fun. If you're not a fan of the hack and slash genre, this might not appeal to you, but if you don't, just give it a try at least. Rent it from a game store. Rent it from Gamefly. Rent it from like some store, like some mom and pop, something like that. Buy it at a lower price, and you can get two games for f two games at the price of one. That's what's the best thing about this right here. Two games at the price of one. This is a good deal. Nintendo did a good job with this game. Hopefully, this game will pay off, and hopefully, Nintendo will make a band of three for this game because I just really do love this series. I really do love this franchise, and I really do love this mythology that the developers have created. And I can't wait for the next project. Whatever Platinum Games is doing next, I am going to buy that game because they have me hooked. It's just amazing. All done.